Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Bring It On. We're gonna begin our adventure. The caravan master finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods. And beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Not sort of looming black mass on the hillside. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. Tonight everybody stays put and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? At last, the caravan master turns to you, frowning as he looks you over. Touch of the rumbling rot, could be. There's a stinging beetle around here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. Which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker, but see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Udama looks over his shoulder at his assistant, a lanky, intense man named Sparfell, who carries an old sunbleached bow. He nods in your direction. Sparfell nods and slides the worn bow over his shoulder. Where would I find these berries? They grow on a bush that's common around here, kind of funny looking. You'll know it when you see it. Doubt you'd have to go far off the road to find one. What are those ruins? Nothing you won't see on half the hills of Air Glonfoth. Money to be made selling their knickknacks in Defiance Bay if you don't mind getting stuck with Glonfoth and arrows now and again. They didn't build them, but I'll be the effigy if they don't watch them like a mother bear. Of course, all the ones around here have been ransacked ten times over. Got nothing left worth half a pawn, so I hear. He adds with a wink. Who did build the ruins? Got different names for them. Settlers called them in Gwithans. Nobody that liked them enough to stop them becoming ruins tell you that much. Odoma shrugs. Is it dangerous out here? Not if you hurry about your business. And not if the weather holds up. There's concern in his tone, but he does not elaborate. What kind of weather do they get out here? This time of year? Rain, mostly. And wind. But there's a different kind of wind out here, time to time. Locals call it a beowick, born out of the ether, the spirit's path. Never seen it myself, never care to. What are these huge rocks coming up out of the ground? They don't got Audra where you come from? Well, it just grows up out of the ground like this. Goes deep like tree roots. Some of it all the way to the heart of the world, you believe the stories. Odoma frowns. It's more like a shell than a proper rock. Easier to work if you're a mason. Got all kinds of strange properties. Seems to have some kind of life of its own. Dies if it gets dug up. Loses its luster. Folks think it probably grew at one point or another, but not these days. The soul butchers in Defiance Bay use it for different things. I've heard tell it can hold a man's soul, but I don't care to see it. Got enough to worry about without seeing something like that. I'll go see about those berries then. Hold on. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead, I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. He scans over the travelers, resting his eyes at length on a sturdy, armor-clad woman who spent the journey's night sleeping on uneven ground without blanket or pillow. Kalisha. Kalisha! Woman looks up on her own time. He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. What kind of guide says something like that? Kind you can afford. <laughs> Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Otoma chuckles and shakes his head. He looks at you. And he casts a sidelong glance at her. Off with you. Hayden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Get your berries and hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. 
If it's a Beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. Odom, a small grin recedes beneath his mustache. And he is stern once more. You heard the man. Let's get going before you keel over. All right, what do we have in our inventory? We have a giant miniature space piglet. This tiny titanic pig has an otherworldly appearance that seems to be at odds with its endearing behavior. It follows you dutifully and requires nothing in return save companionship. Gon's Pledge. Grants Gon's Pledge to per rest. This item grants the ability to shield the wearer from the myriad perils that plague the world of Eora. An aspect of the god Eothis, Gon represents the harvest of old age symbolized here by the many interlocking sickles that form the ring. As Gon helps pre uh, protect the dignity of old age, so too do his followers pledge to prevent young lives from being harvested before their time. Huh. Go on then, before it gets too dark. These tall, glass-green pillars appear as if they have sprouted from the earth. The flickering fire sets shadows dancing within. I'll get it open. Anyone need supplies? I've got sundries for sale. See a man wearing simple but mostly neat clothes. He's transfixed, however, by a ragged tear in the seam of his tunic. Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. He shakes his head and laughs when he notices you. He scratches one cheek with his knuckles. It's covered with uneven stubble, as if he hasn't quite gotten used to shaving on the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some basic traveling supplies for sale, if you'd like to take a look. Who are you? I'm a trader, originally from the Adir Empire. But I've been trying to establish new business out here. The life on the road has brought some unexpected challenges, to be sure. And I'm sure you've noticed how prickly the locals can be. But we're here to make the most of things, right? He looks at his wagon and grins ruefully. We might as well try. My thoughts exactly. Something else you need? Looks like we're settled for the night. Tell me, about, tell me about the Adir Empire. It's not as big as it used to be, but it's still big. The mainland is a continent northwest of here, but the colonies used to include Rayad Saris and the Deerwood. About 150 years ago, Deerwood won its independence from the Empire, a fact our companions are quick to remind me of. He gives you a lopsided grin and nods the other scattered caravanners. Why do you move all the way out here? Because it seemed friendlier than Rayad Saris? <laughs> My brothers took over the family mercantile business a few years ago, and there wasn't enough for me to do back home. I moved out to try and expand. He laughs. He shrugs. Deerwood is a former Adir colony, uh, so it seemed like a good place to start. As much as I admire the Riyad Saren's work ethic, they've always struck me as a little fanatical. Sounds reasonable enough. Out here. I'm just taking it one day at a time. Let's see what you've got. Yeah. Alright, so I think I needed three lockpicks to get into this chest. I have three lockpicks, I should be able to get into I'll it. Get it open. Finished. Huh?
Alright, Owen's Cradle. So that came out a little weird. Voluntary doesn't budge. Zap oozes from the ragged wound in its trunk. Or jagged wound. Not looking forward to trying to lift that thing tomorrow. I'll have your water soon enough. Stream's not going anywhere. This path winds through a narrow canyon, back the way you came. Grooves in the road mark the passage of hundreds of caravans. We shouldn't stray too far. Let's check by those outcroppings. Alright, so per encounter, I can use these as much as I want. Yeah. Far easier than the wolves in Baldur's Gate. This is it. I right, got my spring berries. You look like you've seen your share of action. What did you do before you came out here? I was a blade for hire. Yeah? How's it you happen to come here? I've never been much good at anything else. I need to go where there's work that pays. Do what you can to survive. What else can someone be expected to do? Felicia uh, breathes in her surroundings. It's been a long time since I've been this way. I always did like it. What Raytrix offer makes a girl think. I'll give him that. You here to settle like the rest of the lot? No, I'm just passing through. That's usually the case with the big city just a little ways further up the same road. Where are you headed? Somewhere I can make some money. Ah, a man after my own heart. May your luck be better than mine. Anyway, I'm wasting time here. Odom will give me an earful. Let's be on our way. But why are you here? Felicia sighs unevenly. Her eyes searched the ground at her feet. My sister moved out here some time back. She sent me a letter. She seemed worried. That's how she always is. This time, though, she asked me to come out. That's got me a little worried. I haven't seen her in ages, knowing God work in ex ex -metil, ex middle. If I do anything for her, she's... Well, she's a much better woman than me. So I'm here and we'll see. Odom I have worked with before. He doesn't usually drive around this way, but he's doing it for me. Tell me about yourself. I've got simple needs, like open skies and far horizons. I'll find work that lets me live that way. My family wanders too. We started in Deerwood. My parents ended up in the living lands. We've got a brother in Roatai and another in Adir. My sister in Gilded Vale. She's the only real homebody. What can you tell me about Deerwood? I'm not much for history, but from what I know, it used to be a part of the Adir Empire. It broke off after a war some years back. Locals here are feisty, and that's how they like it. I've been out of touch. I've been hearing weird kinds of things about it lately. People having trouble giving birth, I guess. A lot of them. It's been going on for years now, but somehow it's getting worse. With an uneasy tremor in her voice, she adds... I have to ask my sister more about it. Alright, let's get back to camp. You know, I wouldn't hold my breath that Sparfell is getting you water anytime soon. He does what he feels like, when he feels like it. We should check upon him first. Clap him around a little. Stream's just down that way. Come on, let's get you your water. 
Before we cross the bridge, I want to check the whole shoreline on this side. It usually pays to be thorough. Travelers, maybe, or looters, or bandits. Bad sign any way you figure it. The corpse is cold to the touch, and a ripe smell wafts from, its, wafts from it in putrid waves. A dark crusted bloodstain besmirches its simple linen clothing. Yeah. What a surprise. Sparful went hunting. At least he left the water skins. Come on. You crouch at the river bank and dip your water skin into the cool water while Kalisha waits nearby, keeping watch. As you rise, you notice her look up sharply towards the tree line. Out of the trees emerges Sparfell, one of the guides. Barely discernible in the dim moonlight. He no longer carries his bow, but there's a strangeness to his gait. His stride wobbly as he moves toward you with labored breath. Sparful, are you alright? Glacier frowns. Sparful's toe catches on a rock. It collapses forward in a heap. The feathered shaft of an arrow planted between his shoulders like an enemy flag. Ambush! Back to camp. Oh, well, hold on. Let's uh, let's loot first, and then we'll worry about that. The footprints around the campfire are indistinct. They may have been here for days or longer. Let's get back to camp. Doesn't look like things are going well over there.
All right, let's see how this stuff compares to my current equipment. More base damage. But it's also the same damage type. So maybe I want some variety here instead. Plus the torch looks pretty cool. Yeah. So we'll keep it as is. All around you lie the masked remains of the other travelers. Peppered with arrows and knife hilts, splayed and bug-eyed and filthy. Alicia puts the back of her left hand to her mouth to ward away some poisonous vapor. A handful of dark figures stands above the fallen, treading on limbs and backs and heads, breaking their axes from bodies as if from half-split logs. One of them, towering and severe with a thick beard tasseled with knots, holds a wet blade at the neck of the young man you recognize as Hyoden, the last of your caravan left standing. Bet on your arms, trespasser. Do not forfeit this man's life for a fight you will lose. The ruin has not been sullied by our hands, men of Ear Glanfoth. The words carry no weight when I have seen the truth with my own eyes. Blood must be paid for this intrusion. So I say again, lay down your arms. Don't trust them. They meant to kill us all. We're innocent in this. We not listen to reason. We know the ruin has been entered. We have seen the footsteps, heard the echoes. They must answer to the gods. Alright, so I'm looking for reason and stoicism. I think option 9 is the best bet. If I put down my weapons, we're all dead. We're all dead anyway. The gods demand their penance. The man drives his axe through Hidden's spine. His body gives one convulsive twitch before dropping at his feet, lifeless. The man raises his axe high as it begins to charge. Focus all the ads down first, then we'll take out the leader. Jimmy lies supine on the ground, unable to rise. His companion is now silent among the other dead. His breath comes in wheezing, fitful gasps. He looks not at you, but the sky above you. Forgive us. Barely audible beneath his choked sighs, a whisper of wind stirs the air. At this, the man's eyes roll back as he closes them. Good. Good. The gods are just. A queer smile crosses his face. I am ready. Wind begins to swell, whipping around the camp, 
electric and volatile, bending pots and rattling tents like an angry spirit. You can feel it begin to seep beneath your skin. Where it pierces you, it feels as though it is rending you apart from within. Seated against a wagon wheel amidst the howling maelstrom, slashed across chest and bowel, Odoma's body stirs. With great effort, he raises his sagging head, his eyes barely open. He looks directly at you. Get inside! Run! But there's loot. Treading against the gale that threatens to pull you off your feet with every step, you set your hands in the worn folds of weathered rock and set about pulling yourself up the precipice. With the last burst of energy before your arms give out, you swing yourself up onto the ledge. There's a deep resonance to the wind now. You feel it in the rocks beneath your feet, inside the cavity of your own chest, as though it would shake the marrow from your bones. Each new gust menaces the old stones before you, loosening connections, unsettling balances. As you dart beneath the old archway, the entire portal begins to fall beneath its own weight. That was... We should be dead. Alistair shakes her head. We can't stay here. There could be another collapse. We're not getting out that way anyway. Let's get further inside. Huh? The lower level of the ruins has been blocked off by fallen rubble. We have to be careful in here. Place has been open to the wilds for a couple thousand years. Might be a lot of vermin taking shelter here. Four-legged if we're lucky, two if not. What happened out there? Elsha shakes her head. Windstorm. But kind they only get in Eir Glonfoth. Not too many people live through them, so it's hard to know what's true. Glonfoth and word is Beowak. Uh, to them, it's the god's way of reaping the souls of the land. They couldn't find their, way, their own way out. They'll take a living soul as soon as a dead one. Still got yours? We look for another way out. Storm has to die sometime. Who attacked us? Glenfothans. Those would be the hut dwellers Odom had warned you about. Let's be Fangs of Galloway, who are the twitchiest of the lot. They go ruin to ruin, looking for fights with colonists. Poor Odoma. I think he half expected this, once we lost the main road. Glenfothans said we trespassed in the ruins. I don't believe that. Odoma would never allow it. But as much as the fangs are hotheads, Glenfothans don't attack without being provoked. Either they saw something and got the wrong idea, or... He glances down the passage beyond. Or there's looters in here with us. That's not something we need right now. What about everyone else in our caravan? Alistair's lips press together and her chin rumples. Her voice is faint. The wheels got hold of them now. She looks up. God's grant them better luck in their next lives. You don't seem too upset about all this. Alistair looks you in the eye, a volatile current running beneath her voice. Maybe you just don't know me enough to know what upset looks like. And maybe I've seen worse too. Seen worse and kept on walking, because there's nothing else to be done. And because there's other people you care about who still need you. Let's get going. Huh? Someone else has been here. We should move. Well, let's take their stuff first. So this is probably worth giving to... Her yeah. like that. 
Mm-hmm. I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll see about finding a way out of these caverns and continuing our journey. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.